trust in God when you don't understand. It's one thing to trust God for something. This room is full of people tonight and lots of people watching by TV that you're trusting God for something. You're asking God to change something in your life, to give you something or to make something go away that's unpleasant. You're trusting God to change somebody else in your life. It's one thing to trust God to give you something or to do something. It's another thing entirely to trust God through something or to continue trusting God when he's not giving you what you want, when everything around you is shaking and you just do not understand what is going on. I would imagine that we have people here tonight and lots of them that you feel like literally everything in your life is shaking right now. Got anybody? All right. Now see, for some of you, it's just a thing here or there, but some of you, I mean, it's like, what is going on? And you just don't understand. But I can tell you from many years of experience, and the only way you really learn how to trust God is through experience, by the way. We all start out wanting to trust God, and the only way we learn how to trust God is by having a reason to have to trust God. <laughs> and then as we do trust Him, we see His faithfulness, and then little by little, as we journey with God, and our walk with Him is a journey, as we journey with God, we gain experience. Now, the way you trust God now, if you've been born again for five years, is nothing compared to the way you'll trust God another five years go by, or another 10 years go by, or another 20 years go by. And we will never 100% completely trust until Jesus comes back to get us. But thankfully, we can continue to grow. Trusting God is a decision. And I want to encourage those of you tonight that feel like everything in your life is shaking, that your only real answer is to trust God and to keep on trusting God and to keep on trusting God. And yes, it's difficult when you don't understand what's going on, and it's especially difficult when what's going on in your life just does not seem fair. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26, which is where we're going to begin, talks about how God shakes things in our life until only those things that cannot be shaken remain. So that means God's going to work with us until we let go of all the unstable things in our life and we're only hanging on to the rock of our salvation that cannot be moved. Let me give you an example. I like examples Jesus taught in parables and I just think we need practical examples many years ago when my ministry was in the very beginning stages I had a group of I thought friends have you ever had any people that you thought were friends and then found out they weren't do you know people like that are dangerous to you when you put your confidence in people that really are not who you think they are. It's a constant open door for the devil to work through them to get to you. And so many times in God's mercy, he will remove those people from our lives and initially we may not understand. It's very difficult when something is stripped out of your life that you're not ready to give up yet. Amen. And so I had these, this group of women, they helped me in my women's ministry, there was about 12 of them. And I just thought they were my best friends ever. They would never hurt me. They'll always be for me. Well, that's the first mistake. There's nobody on this earth that's breathing that will never hurt you. <laughs> I don't care how much they love you, as human beings, we do not have the ability to never, ever, ever hurt somebody or disappoint somebody that we're in relationship with. So you're setting yourself up for a lot of pain 
if you're looking at anybody thinking, you'll never hurt me. I can always, always depend on you. Don't give that trust to anybody but Jesus. He is the only one that deserves that kind of total, complete, radical trust. And don't ever look at anybody and think, I don't know what I'd do without you. I don't know what I'd do without you. The only one you want to say that to is Jesus. I don't know what I would do without you. And so, long story short, I had a relationship with these ladies for a long time, and we were just having fun, just having fun, being in, I think, really playing at being in ministry at that point. And um, I still couldn't even really tell you what happened. I know now that it was God just revealing their weaknesses. Not that I didn't have a bunch of my own, I did, but God was going to promote me to new levels in ministry. He had a plan for my life, and I couldn't take those people with me. Do you know, every place where the bus stops, somebody has to get off. Amen. <laughs> and so the bus was stopped and God was ready to take me to my next destination, but there were some people that needed to get off the bus and I didn't know it. So long story short, I found out they were talking about me behind my back. I found out that one of them was after my job. I found out that they were telling lies about me. And look at me when I tell you that I was devastated and heartbroken. I couldn't believe it because they were Christians. <laughs> now, I had come from worldly relationships where people did that kind of stuff, but these were Christians. So don't even look at your Christian friends and think, you will never hurt me. And it's not even that people are mean they're just people they're just fleshly people and so that's a time when I can remember when man was my world shaken I mean shaken I did not understand what was going on the pain in my soul was so deep but part of the thing that you have to realize is that what you don't understand now things that you're going through right now that you do not understand, you cannot make any sense out of it all, later on, I promise you, later on, you will look back and say, now I get it. Now I get it. Amen? And please believe me when I say that a lot of the things that you think are terrible actually in reality are good. I didn't think I'd get much of a clap on that. <laughs> and the things that aren't good, God can work for good. But now listen, we're partners with God. He doesn't just work everything out for good. We trust him and he works everything out for good. We trust God and he works everything out for good. So for those of you tonight, either here in the building or watching from home, and you feel like everything in your world is shaking, I understand what you're going through, but I can tell you that many of those things that are shaking are things that you don't really need in your life anyway. They're not stable things, and God's gonna give you something that is stable, which is more of Him. Do you know the less of other stuff you have, the more of God there's room for in your life? I remember one time moaning, oh God, I just don't have anybody but you. <laughs> Poor Joyce, just stuck with God. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> All right, verse 26. Then at Mount Sinai, His voice shook the earth, but now He has given a promise Yet once more I will shake and make tremble not only the earth, but also the starry heavens. Now this expression yet once more indicates the final removal and transformation of all that can be shaken. That is,
what has been created in order that that which cannot be shaken may remain and continue. I wonder how many people would have the courage to pray sincerely, God, I invite you to shake everything in my life that can be shaken. I didn't see too many hands up. But. So that only those things that cannot be shaken remain. How many of you want a better life? You know what? You got to go through to get there. Let us therefore receive a kingdom that is firm and stable and cannot be shaken. And let us offer to God pleasing service and acceptable worship with modesty and pious care and godly fear and awe. For our God is indeed a consuming fire. I'm getting ready. I've already started putting together the notes. I'm going to... I'm going to teach a message on the fire of God coming up here sometime real soon. You know, the Bible talks a lot about fire. Fire is a purifying agent. And I believe the baptism of fire, which the Bible talks about, John said, I baptize you in water, but one will come after me who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We don't hear enough about the baptism of fire. But I've had that in my life, and many of you have had that in your life. And it wasn't pleasant, but I'll tell you what it amounts to. God comes in, and he burns up everything in your life that is useless. And what's worth keeping, he sets on fire for his glory. I'm going to say that one more time, because you're looking at me kind of bug-eyed. Why do we want to hang on to useless stuff? I don't know, do you have any bad attitudes that could be burned out of you? <laughs> no, not you, I'm sure. <laughs> when the fire of God comes in our life, we sing songs like, oh God, send your fire. <laughs> When the fire of God comes into our life, it's going to be painful before it's pleasant. Amen? Amen? You know, we're so afraid of pain, but a lot of times pain makes things better. It does. Sometimes you can have eternal pain that's getting you nowhere, but if you have the right kind of pain or if you embrace the right kind of pain for a short period of time, it will bring you into a much better place. I can use the example of the knee replacements, I mean the, gosh, I hope I don't have to have a knee replaced. The, the hip replacement surgery that I had. I put up with back pain for 20 plus years. Pain, 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 pain. How many of you have had pain long enough in your life? And I'm not just talking physical pain, I'm talking emotional pain or any other kind of pain. Is anybody tired of being upset all the time? Tired of being mad at people because you, you choose bad friends that you won't let go of and then you don't understand. <laughs> Why not just pray, God, get every person out of my life that is not good for me. And even if I'm lonely for a long time, give me people in my life that are right, godly people that I can count on and trust. Well, I'll tell you what, if I can get you to pray some specific ways, we can get some of God's business done in this place tonight. Not just, oh, God, bless me. <laughs> bless me, Lord. Now, how about send your fire? Shake everything in my life that can be, can be shaken. And it, it may not be pleasant for a while, but honey, later on. Later on is such an anointed time in our lives. You see, now I'm living in later on. But it wasn't easy to get here. It was worth it. I finally got fed up with going around and around the same stupid mountains over and over and over. Oh, God, I don't understand what's wrong. Oh, God. I hope somebody in the building is at that place tonight and my message can do you some kind of good. So we at least pray, God, you do what you want to do in my life. I have a little prayer that I pray, God, if you have to, tie me to the altar. 
That's why if you have to tie me to the altar and don't let me get away, but do what you want to do in my life. Now, our God is indeed a consuming fire. You know, sometimes people have everything in, your in their life shaken in reality. In Nepal, not very long ago, there was a sudden and a terrible earthquake. How many of you heard about that? Okay. You know, we hear about things like that, and sadly, we forget them about as quick as we hear about them. And we're sorry for the people, and their lives are left in devastation. But these are times when the body of Christ needs to rise up and at least pray, God, is there something I can do? So I can't even, just imagine if that was you, if you were having a cup of tea and all of a sudden, a few minutes later, your house is in shambles around you. You can't find some of your children. Perhaps your parents have been killed or many other terrible, terrible things. And you know, when people are in situations like that, they tend to think that life is over. But I want to tell you something, no matter what condition your life is in right now, no matter how many pieces it's in, with God's help, you can rebuild. You can rebuild. And the people in Nepal can rebuild. And this will be on television there, and I'm purposely trying to use a little bit of this to encourage them that they can rebuild. Their lives can be rebuilt. And no matter how far you think you are away from God, He knows where you're at. And God will go to any lengths to get to you and to help you. God will find somebody that he can love you through and he will love you back into wholeness and he will meet your needs if you trust him. <laughs> Isaiah 40, 29 through 31 are wonderful scriptures that we should take a look at right now. You know them. He gives power to the faint and the weary and to him who has no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it abound. Even young people shall faint and be weary, and selected young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But they that wait upon the Lord. See, I knew you'd like that. But they that wait upon the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, shall change and renew their strength. Through the strength of God, you can rise up and rebuild. You can run and not be weary. You can walk and you shall not faint. When I asked how many of you felt like everything in your life was shaking, I spotted a few people, not everybody, but I could tell from looking at you that there's some really major things going on in your life right now. Well, you know what? Congratulations to you for being in the house of God to get the help that you need. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You can rebuild. Everybody say, I can rebuild. <laughs> Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Maybe your house fell down because you were trying to build it before. How about this go around? Let's let God build the house. Let's let him be the one that builds it. Well, what do you do when things are happening in your life and you just don't understand? Psalm 37, 3, trust in the Lord and do good. <laughs> trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident in the Lord and do good. Very simple. It's a two-step plan to success when everything in your life is falling apart. Trust God and do good. Now. I did this in detail this morning, but let me quickly say that whatever ails us, God's word is medicine for our soul. And, you know, like for example, if, if I sin and I'm miserable with guilt because I've sinned, I can take a good dose of God forgives me. <laughs> I can take a good dose of the mercy of God and be healed in my soul. If 
I'm mad at somebody else because they've hurt me. I can take a good dose of I forgive you <laughs> and be completely healed. If I'm sick with jealousy because somebody else is getting what I want, I can take a great big dose of contentment <laughs> and my soul can be healed. But there's one thing that is the answer to every problem that ails us, and it's called trust God and do good. If you have a nice big bottle of both of these things in your house, I don't care what ails you, you've got what you need to always be well. Now look, this is a prescription for trust. It comes from Dr. Jesus. <laughs> the patient is prescribed for as whosoever. Take as many as you need for as long as you need. Refills are endless. But you have to be careful, this stuff has side effects. I mean, when you start taking trust, wow. You have a side effect of peace, joy, stability, confidence. <laughs> Better life. And then if you max, match it up with some do good. See, I think a lot of times we think, well, I'm trusting God, but what are you doing? While you're trusting God, are you sowing some good seeds in somebody else's life? And believing that even though you can't fix your own problem, you can help somebody else, and through doing that, you're sowing a seed that will then bring a harvest in your life. And even something as devastating as the earthquake in Nepal, I would go there and preach the same message that I'm preaching to you because I don't care how bad off you are, you can always find something that you can do for somebody else and nothing makes the devil any madder than when he's throwing his best, biggest problem at you for you to say, I'm gonna trust God and I'm gonna help somebody else. I did this in detail this morning, but let me quickly say that Whatever ails us, God's word is medicine for our soul. And, you know, like for example, if, if I sin and I'm miserable with guilt because I've sinned, I can take a good dose of God forgives me. <laughs> I can take a good dose of the mercy of God and be healed in my soul. If I'm mad at somebody else because they've hurt me, I can take a good dose of I forgive you <laughs> and be completely healed. If I'm sick with jealousy because somebody else is getting what I want, I can take a great big dose of contentment and my soul can be healed. But there's one thing that is the answer to every problem that ails us and it's called trust God and do good. If you have a nice big bottle of both of these things in your house, I don't care what ails you, you've got what you need to always be well. Now look, this is a prescription for trust. It comes from Dr. Jesus. <laughs> the patient is prescribed for as whosoever. Take as many as you need for as long as you need. Refills are endless. But you have to be careful, this stuff has side effects. I mean, when you start taking trust, wow. You have a side effect of peace, joy, stability, confidence. <laughs> Better life. And then if you max, match it up with some do good. See, I think a lot of times we think, well, I'm trusting God, but what are you doing? While you're trusting God, are you sowing some good seeds in somebody else's life? And believing that even though you can't fix your own problem, you can help somebody else, and through doing that, you're sowing a seed that will then bring a harvest in your life. And even something as devastating as the earthquake in Nepal, I would go there and preach the same message that I'm preaching to you because I don't care how bad off you are, you can always find something that you can do for somebody else and nothing makes the devil any madder than when he's throwing his best, 
biggest problem at you for you to say, I'm going to trust God and I'm going to help somebody else. Now, this do-good stuff has side effects, too, and they're extreme happiness. <laughs> and rewards in heaven. See? Trust God. They're right in here, the pills. And we got do-good pills in here, too. You know, when we don't understand and we start trying to figure out what only God knows, there can only be one result, and that's confusion. If I would have started out tonight and said, how many of you are confused right now about something going on in your life? I would have had a lot of hands go up. But see, here's the truth. You can't be confused if you refuse to try to figure it out. I can tell you right now, Dave is a guy that does not try to figure anything out. He's just like, God knows, and he'll take care of it. I'm casting my care. And I've gotten there. It's taken me 40 years, but I've, I have a breakdown every once in a while, but I'm, I'm doing good. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible says that we know in part. We know in part. We don't know everything. We're not intended to know everything. It wouldn't even be good for us if we knew everything. Do you know, if you knew right now everything coming up in your future, hmm, <laughs> most of us would just sign off and say, forget it. <laughs> or even if you knew how God intends to use you or bless you in the future, you might get full of pride and that would ruin it. So God only reveals things to us a little bit of time as he knows it's right. And there is no such thing there's no need for trust if we know everything. Do you know that God really couldn't even be your God if you knew everything that he knows? We need to get satisfied to know the one who knows and not have to know everything. Can some of you take a step of faith tonight and say, I don't understand what's going on in my life, but I am not gonna try to figure it out anymore. I am gonna trust God and I am gonna do good. Wow, I feel the burdens lifting already. Woo! There they go. See, here's the thing. The devil sends out... He comes, sits real close to your ear. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, huh. How'd that happen? Well, look at that person over there. They don't, they're not even serving God and they're blessed. Just explain that. If God is so good, how did that happen? If God loves you so much, how did that happen? And you know what? I'm going to show you a scripture in a little bit that said that Jesus overheard but ignored <laughs> the bad reports that were coming to him. You know, I may hear the devil, but I don't have to believe him. I may hear him, but I don't have to bow down to him. And everything that he screams in your ear, you need to just say, I don't, I don't have to know. I'm gonna trust God and do good. I'm gonna trust God and do good. I'm gonna trust God and do good, and I'm always gonna come out on top if I do that. Amen? You gotta be careful about all the things that
That's what trust means. Trust means I'm no longer miserable. Trust means I'm letting go of it and I'm going to do what I can do, but I'm not going to try to do what I cannot do. Hallelujah. My gosh, I about drove myself crazy for years trying to figure everything out. And you know, sometimes when you think you've got answers, you still don't have answers. You just think you've got answers. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, the world is full of mysteries. The Bible talks about mysteries, the mystery of Christ, the mysteries of the kingdom of God, the mysteries of heaven, the mystery of Christ in me, the hope of glory. So many mysteries. And why do we get so rattled about the things that we don't understand? We should be intrigued by these mysteries. Pastor Mike told me today that of, of all the movies watched, the number one of all time of everybody, their favorite movies are mysteries. I love mysteries. You, you're drawn in. <laughs> you come closer. But why is it when there's a mystery in our relationship with God that sometimes we... <laughs> we should be amazed by the mysteries of heaven and the mysteries of the incarnation and, the, and the, the mystery of the Trinity. We should just be like, God, you are so awesome. Nobody can figure you out. This is a mystery we are not gonna figure out. The Bible says when Jesus comes again, we will know him even as we are known right now. There's going to be a time in your life when you will know everything, but it is not now. And if you don't do anything else on this Friday night, July 31st, 2015, get it through your head that you are gonna go through life not knowing a lot of things and you can get happy about it and have a lot of peace. Now in the morning when you wake up and the first thing you start trying to figure something out, open your mouth and say, I'm gonna trust God and do good. I'm gonna trust God and do good. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Take notice, I tell you a mystery. <laughs> a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God. We shall not all fall asleep in death, but we shall all be changed and transformed. Now he's basically saying that when Christ comes, there will be some that won't ever die because the ones who are alive on the earth at that time will be caught up in the air. And those that have already gone before will rise up and will meet him in the air. And we'll all be changed, changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call, for a trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable, free and immune from decay, and we shall all be changed and transformed. I tell you, this is shouting scripture. This is what we get to look forward to. You know what? Even when Jesus shows up, we're still gonna have stuff wrong with us. He doesn't care that you never reach the place of perfection. What he wants is a perfect heart who's always moving toward him, moving toward him, moving toward him. And I tell people all the time, just get up every day and do the best you can and let God do the rest of what you can't do. And when he returns, whatever is still wrong with you is going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And you will be like him and see him as he is. You know what? I don't worry about the stuff that's wrong with me anymore. It doesn't trouble me one bit. And it makes the devil so mad he's about to have a nervous breakdown. 
You know why I don't worry with it anymore? Because I about killed myself with worry over it for years and years. And you know what God finally showed me? You're no surprise to me. I knew what I was getting when I got you. Come on. I mean, do you honestly think that you got saved and the next day God said, oh, no. I sure didn't know you were going to be like this. God is not surprised by anything that happens in our life. The people in Nepal were surprised by the earthquake, but God was not surprised. And you may be surprised by some of the things that are going on in your life right now, but God is not surprised. And he already has prepared your way of escape. God has already planned the way out, and all you have to do is keep taking some trust and some do good. I love this message. <laughs> Mysteries. Let's lean into them instead of backing away from them. Verse 53, for this perishable part of us must put on the imperishable nature and this mortal part of us, this nature that is capable of dying, must put on immortality immortality freedom from death now just hang on and when this perishable part puts on the imperishable and this that was capable of dying puts on freedom from death then shall be fulfilled the scripture that says death is swallowed up in and unto victory O death where is your victory O death where is your sting You may leave this earth, but you won't die. You'll be like him, even as he is right now, and you'll understand everything that you don't understand now. You know, there's a lot of things that I don't understand that don't confuse me. I don't understand gravity, but I'm enjoying it right now. I don't get upset about not understanding that. I don't fully understand all the mechanics of breathing, but I'm participating and <laughs> enjoying it. I don't understand how trees and grass and flowers can look so dead in the winter and have no life in them, and then in the spring they just kind of, but I enjoy that every year, and I'm like, oh my God, you are so good. I don't understand electricity, but I depend on it. I don't know how I can put a little message in my cell phone and send it to my son who's in India and in less than five minutes have a message back from him. I don't understand it, but I use it every day. Why do we think that we have to understand everything about God who is less understandable than anybody? <laughs> I don't need to understand what God's doing in my life. I just need to trust him that he's good and whatever he's doing, whether I like it or not right now, I will like it eventually. I wish that I could really explain to you all the stuff that I've went through in my life. Oh, I was such an unbelievable mess. And the work that God has done in me. But it hasn't all been pleasant. But it's so worth it. Stop running away from God and running away from everything that's uncomfortable and everything that's hard and everything that hurts you a little bit and just dig in and say, God, I want your will in my life. You do what you want to do in my life. When I lost all my friends, I was lonely. I mean, lonely. And it was hard and it hurt, but I couldn't have gone to the next place. I couldn't have carried all that baggage with me. Some of you have got some stuff that you're trying to take with you and it's just dead baggage and you need to get rid of it and let it go. But why do we keep hanging on and hanging on and hanging on? Because sometimes even our pain, we're so attached to it that we don't want to let go of it. Like I said this morning, we can learn how to function within our dysfunction. 
it really blessed me when I saw this, you know, right, right down to the very end. The last thing that Jesus said was, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And right before that, he said, my God, my God, why? Even Jesus in his humanity said, why? You know, I can ask why, but I don't have to get confused. God, show me why if you want to, but if you don't, I'm going to trust you anyway. And you know what else Jesus did on the cross? He not only continued to trust God on the cross when he was hurting the worst that he could possibly hurt. All of us together are not hurting as bad tonight as Jesus hurt on that cross. We can put all of our pain and all of our confusion together and it doesn't even begin to match what he went through. But you know what? On that cross, he was loving people right to the very end. Not only did he say, I commit myself into your hands, but there was a couple of thieves there. <laughs> he ministered to them. Took the time in his pain You'll be with me today in paradise. You know what else I love? He made provision for his mom. Come on, in the midst of his pain, he said, John, I want you to take care of my mother. Right to the very end, he was trusting God and doing good, trusting God and doing good, trusting God and doing good, trusting God and doing good. You know, we worry way too much about what other people are doing to us and not nearly enough. We don't pay enough attention to how we should respond. Do you know that you're not responsible for anybody but you? And no matter how many wrong things somebody does to you, the only thing you're responsible for and the only thing I'm responsible for is my reaction. Amen? Occupy until I come. In the book of Luke, it says that Jesus said, will I find faith on the earth when I come back? You know, no matter how big our problem is, all Jesus wants us to do is just believe. Believe. Simple childlike faith. I don't understand it, God, but I believe. I don't understand why I had cancer 25 years ago. I was out preaching faith and laying hands on other people praying for their healing that had stuff like that. But I just kept saying, I trust you, God. I trust you. I trust you. And he took care of it. There's a lot of things in my life I don't understand. I don't understand why the power got shut off in the building last night. How dumb is that? <laughs> I mean, I don't understand that. But, I, you know, I'm growing. I'm stretching. I, do any of you have any stretch marks? You know, if you're not being stretched in faith... <laughs> On, women get stretch marks when they're giving birth. We need to all have spiritual stretch marks in our life. We need to be giving birth to some stuff. Amen? This is one time when the men get to have stretch marks. God stretches us in our life. How many of you have walked with God a few years and now you have a much greater capacity to trust him than you did before? Amen? Isn't life so much better when we trust God? No matter what your problem is, the answer to it is trust God and do good. I love John eleven forty. 40. He said, did I not tell you and promise you that if you would only believe, you would see the glory of God? <laughs> What is the work that God requires of us that we believe? Come on, some of you, when I said everything around you shaking and you, I could see you like, there's pain in this room tonight. You know what? And I understand. I get it. And we get confused about our pain. It's interesting that we never get confused about the good times. You know, I've never sat around and got confused about, wow, I wonder, I just can't figure out why 
God's letting me be on television around the world. Why does that really confuses me? I've never one time done that. I'm just like, yes. But if he took me off, I'd be confused. You understand what I'm saying? We don't, we don't get, you know, our confusion is selective and we're only confused about the stuff we don't like. We're only confused about the things that hurt, but we, let's trust God with our pain. Can some of you take your pain tonight and trust God with your pain and say, God, this hurts so bad, I feel like I can't stand it, but I trust you and I'm gonna keep trying to be a blessing to other people because I believe that even if it hurts, you're helping me give birth to something new in my life. There's an interesting thing if you really think about it. Birthing things always hurts. <laughs> I mean, it does. If you're giving birth to something, don't back off from the pain. Bear down and let God do what he wants to do in your life. Amen. Some of you are getting it. You gotta have a little depth to get this message tonight. God offers us the opportunity to trust Him. And it's challenging for us sometimes because we may not understand what God's doing or why it's taking so long. But one of the things that I've been saying for a long time, it helped me when I first saw this, and I hope it helps you, is that trust requires some unanswered questions. When we have all the answers, then we no longer need to trust God. But while you don't have the answers, thankfully you can trust God, and through that you can have peace. So today we're offering you a four-part series, a CD series, four hours of teaching on trust God and do good. A lot of times when we're trusting God to do something, He may show us something He wants us to do that's going to open up the door for the miracle that we need. So I think this teaching can be very valuable to you. And also a little booklet called I Trust You, which is just a lot of things that the Bible says about trusting God and some scriptures, just something I think that you're going to really enjoy. And also, when you purchase your resources today, would you consider adding a gift to your purchase price that will just help us with the TV program and the cost of keeping it on the air and keeping it coming into your home? Trusting God when you don't understand. It's one thing to trust God for something. This room is full of people tonight and Lots of people watching by TV that you're trusting God for something. You're asking God to change something in your life, to give you something or to make something go away that's unpleasant. You're trusting God to change somebody else in your life. It's one thing to trust God to give you something or to do something. It's another thing entirely to trust God through something or to continue trusting God when He's not giving you what you want. When everything around you is shaking and you just do not understand what is going on. I would imagine that we have people here tonight and lots of them that you feel like literally everything in your life is shaking right now. Got anybody? All right. Now see, for some of you, it's just a thing here or there, but some of you, I mean, it's like, what is going on? And you just don't understand. But I can tell you from many years of experience, and the only way you really learn how to trust God is through experience, by the way. We all start out wanting to trust God, and the only way we learn how to trust God is by having a reason to have to trust God. <laughs> and then as we do trust him, we see his faithfulness, and then little by little, as we journey with God, and our walk with him is a journey, as we journey with God, we gain experience. Now, the way you trust God now, if you've been born again for five years, is nothing compared to the way you'll trust God another five years go by, or another 10 years go by, or another 20 years go by. And we will never 100% completely trust until Jesus comes back to get us. But thankfully, we can continue to grow. Trusting God is a decision. 
And I want to encourage those of you tonight that feel like everything in your life is shaking, that your only real answer is to trust God and to keep on trusting God and to keep on trusting God. And yes, it's difficult when you don't understand what's going on, and it's especially difficult when what's going on in your life just does not seem fair. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26, which is where we're going to begin, talks about how God shakes things in our life until only those things that cannot be shaken remain. So that means God's going to work with us